love for fashion design started with a dive into historical clothing. And ever since then I love to play with different eras as inspiration for my dresses. Especially the structural elements of stays and corsets from the past are something I like to incorporate in my designs. A few days ago I had another idea. I wanted to turn Regency stays into a modern dress. So let's see how this turned out. Starting on the design, I first sketched a typical pair of short stays from around 1810 to see which elements I wanted to transport into my design. First of all, I wanted to incorporate a similar shape. This meant a straighter bodice with only a few seams as well as two triangular bust gussets. These I wanted to turn into more of a cup shape to make the design a bit more modern. Then I changed the length of the bodice, made the strap smaller and curved the back for a lower neckline. With the design ready, I could then create a pattern resembling the stays, make the changes I want for my design and make a mock-up from it. Since the mock-up is only to visualize the design and check the fit, I like to write on every piece the side it belongs to so that I don't have to puzzle all the pieces together. There are a few days where I just don't feel like thinking so much, so if I mark everything as much as I can, I know what to do without having to check it constantly. I'll take my time with sewing the mock-up, making sure to match all seams. Iron it open properly and clip in the seam allowance to ensure smooth lines so that I can be sure that what I made is exactly the pattern. This makes future adjustments a lot easier. On the finished mock-up I could then see if the design changes I had in mind worked out on a bodice and not only looked good in the drawing. Overall I was very happy, so I drew on some minor changes to ensure a better fit and then made the final pattern from the mock-up. Here I'm using again a sturdy but see-through pattern paper. I love this kind of paper because I can lay it on top of the other pieces and trace them precisely. But it's also not very likely to rip or crinkle, which makes it easier to trace onto the fabric later. I'll leave a link to the paper in the description so you can check it out yourself if you want to. After I made sure I got the pattern perfect for the bodice, I directly traced the pattern for the lining as well as the facing from it. This way I directly have a good overview of all the pieces and can move on to cutting all the pattern pieces from the fabric. I start with the outer fabric. This time I'm using a lush velvet, which seems to be of a rusty red. It's a very heavy fabric, which will later present some difficulties. I actually thought about if it would work with the design, since I got some very small pattern pieces, but I decided to use it in the end, which would later turn out to be, well, not a bad idea, but really challenging. I marked the direction of the fabric and started to transfer all the pattern pieces onto it.
Most of the time, and especially with this kind of fabric, I prefer to draw every piece individually so that nothing shifts and that I have the sewing lines on all parts. Since I know the fabric frays a lot, I'm adding a seam allowance of 1.5 cm all around, just to be safe. After preparing three skirt panels as well, I could then continue with the lining pieces. I used the pink lining I had in my stash, which was the one that complemented the velvet best. Since I didn't have a lot of it left, I started by cutting out a half circle for the lining skirt and then used the leftover fabric to cut out all the bodice parts. I added some interfacing to a few parts, like the waistband for example, and then cut out everything. After I got all parts cut out, I prepared a few things before assembling everything. I made sure to have the right thread in my sewing machine, sewed some piping I wanted to add to the dress and then sewed the straps by hand. Initially I wanted to sew them by machine and turn them inside out, but since the fabric is so thick it wouldn't be possible to make them this small. Having all parts prepared and everything laid out, I start to assemble the dress. I started by assembling the lining. The first step here was to add some boning to the center front that I prepared earlier. Next, I sew the front parts together, including the cups, and add boning over the bust point down to the waist. When adding the small part in the front, I make sure to sew it as precise as possible, so that it really looks like a straight line in the end. Something I particularly like is to create the lining. Because I not only want the inside to be as beautiful as the outside, but I also see it like a little insider that I have with whoever gets to wear the dress. Because not everyone can see it. This makes it something personal and shows the value of the person who gets to wear the dress. With the lining finished, I can then switch to the actual dress. Here I start with assembling the bodice. While sewing, I make sure that the fabric doesn't shift under the machine. After sewing everything together, I carefully iron the seams open. Since velvet is very delicate, I'm only using the tip of the iron to open up the seams without pressing too much of the actual fabric. After that, I cut away a lot of the seam allowance, which was necessary since the heavy fabric made the bodice pretty bulky at some parts. After sewing the bodice, I could then prepare the skirt. I first set all the skirt panels together, but leaving the center back open at the top for 25 cm to make sure the skirt is accessible in the end. Here I had to be careful that the fabric doesn't shift under the machine again, 
because otherwise it would make some annoying bugs, which would make the seam very visible. Then I take two different threads that are very sturdy to do the gathering of the skirt. This is done marking every one and a half centimeters at one centimeter seam allowance. Then I sew with both threads along those markings separately, making sure to stay parallel. Because the thread is still on its spool, I can pull the thread as long as necessary. When I'm all the way around the skirt parts, I can use both threads to gather the skirt. This will leave a lot of thread hanging from the spool, so I can roll it back up Cut them off where I need it and save a lot of thread. After the gathering I sew the skirt to the waistband, making sure to divide it evenly. This again got very bulky, which will sadly show on the finished dress a bit. I then added the lining to the bodice before adding the velvet skirt to it. I did it this way because adding both bodice parts had to be done very precise to ensure an even neckline and it was easier without the heavy skirt in the way. I then added some eyelets to the back of the dress. Then sewed the straps on by hand. The final touch was then to add pearls to the cups of the dress. I used three different sizes, placing the bigger ones towards the bottom. I wanted them to start very dense at the bottom of the cups, spreading out to the neckline. I made sure to stay in the seam lines to highlight those triangular shapes. After adding the last pearl, the dress is finally ready. And here is the final dress. I really like how it turned out despite the difficulties with the fabric. You can still see the thickness of the bodice at some places, but I really enjoyed the process of transforming historical elements into this new design and I'm really happy with the outcome. Maybe I'll make the dress again from another fabric to see how it will work out. If you got an idea which fabric would be perfect for the design, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this very small dive into the Regency era with me. I certainly did. <laughs>